So how do cannabis sponsors finance their operations? I mean, what's, what's the process for them? How, how are they setting, are they doing crowdfunding? Are they, like, how are they doing, how are they setting out doing it? So all of the above. Um, crowdfunding is hard though, because it crosses state lines in a lot of respects. And so it becomes a federal jurisdiction and I would be cautious if, in doing that. Um, a lot of it is friends and family. And a lot of it is this, a lot of the people that, especially at the beginning that were applying for those licenses and trying to start up those legitimate businesses were illegitimate businesses before that. And so they had cash that they were sitting on for years that they were now able to deploy in a legal manner instead of an illegal manner. Um, I see most people getting capital from uh, doing traditional investments though. I've seen a lot of uh, securities offerings in the industry uh, that are offered only to people in California. So it doesn't go outside of state lines. They have to prove their residency. They have to do all these things. And we help them put those things together because it's very complicated to do a, a fundraise and limit yourself to one state. And we make sure that the paperwork is as buttoned up as possible. Hmm. Um, but it's not easy to get that working capital. Um, the, there are though, however, um, some outliers there that are just amazing at raising money. I, one of the ones that I think of off the top of my head is Gold Flora. That's run by a woman named Lori Holcomb. She's brilliant. And she has raised money from investors and a lot of them from institutional investors. Or I wouldn't call them institutional, but private equity groups that are well known that are willing to take a risk on her because she's just managed these businesses in an amazing way. So it can be done, but usually I see the traditional, just like any other startup, friends and family first, then maybe a series A and then maybe something that follows a series A or you'll see like a safe or you'll see a, uh, some sort of convertible note that they take out. Um, and that has worked really well for a lot of my clients, uh, particularly in the convertible note that that is something that people are willing to do because they get interest on their money. And if things don't go as well as they, they think they can always convert it into, into equity or, or take some sort of other enforcement measure. The other thing we've done is something called preferred equity where we have springing liens. So if things go sideways, we can start recording liens on real estate. So that's also something that is helpful and you can do. So are there, there are any, a lot of options. Are there any big players other than this lady that you mentioned who are uh, kind of go-to uh, for business, uh, cannabis business loans, for example? Um, you know, my clients that are lending money in this industry like, to stay under the radar. Um, they find deals more than deals find them, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, there are people that are known in on the real estate side that have done investments, and there are people that are known of putting in together uh, fundraisers. Uh, however, or sponsors, right? Um, most of the money that I see that is big money is being raised on the Canadian uh, stock market. They're, they're doing investment funds that are uh, raising money there, and then doing cross-border investment into California. So the biggest money plays that I've seen have all come out of Canada. That's interesting. Now, what about uh, cannabis real estate consultants? I don't want to say agents, because agents implies, you know, mm -hmm. broker agent buying and selling houses. I mean, consultants, cannabis consultants. How do, how do they get involved? What do they do and how do they help investors? I wish there were more, quite frankly. There are a few trusted go-to people that I know in the industry. Um, and they help mostly with dealing with the municipal government or the local government. They deal with the zoning aspects, identifying the properties and things like that. But they're really consultants that deal with uh, how to get yourself legally compliant locally and then at the state level. Um, but not from a lawyer's perspective, but from more of a, a real estate perspective, how to get the real estate buttoned up and ready to go so that you can apply for your license, how to acquire it, how, those types of things. Um, and as a matter of fact, as lawyers, um, we don't have boots on the ground like these guys do. So for us, it's easy, easier to, to recommend our clients to hire this outside consultant with the, to, to navigate the local issues or the state issues and let us deal with the investment structure, the real estate acquisition, the things that lawyers know and know how to do well.